At this point in our course, we have published some APIs and set up external authentication with Extended Basic. Now in this activity, we'll configure an external identity provider and access an API using OAuth 2.0. We do this with Google Sign-In using localhost on both broker and gateway to demonstrate the mechanics involved, but you can apply the concepts presented here to meet your networking and SSL needs. For training purposes, we use Google Sign-In as part of this OAuth 2.0 integration with Boomi, so you will need to have a Google account to complete this activity. We also list the URLs used in this activity in an accompanying text file, urls.txt. I'm going to begin by setting up the identity provider in Google Sign-In. I'll start by configuring a project. I'll create a new project, API course, Boomi. Use the same name for the OAuth client. I'm going to select web server and click create. Now at this point, the client is ready to work with. I could download the client configuration in JSON or get the credentials later from Google's API console. We will need to configure the client further on the console, so I'll wait to get those credentials there. So I've moved now to Google API console. I'm going to select a project from my list of projects. And here it is, API course Boomi. I'll open that. So now that I'm in the project, I will navigate to the APIs and services and credentials. So here in the project and on the credentials page, I'll select the OAuth client. This displays the client ID and the client secret, both of which I'm going to need a little bit later. So I'm going to copy them and paste them into a text editor. I'm also going to leave this tab open in my browser since I'll be coming back into this OAuth client a little bit later. All right, now back in the Boomi platform on configure server external authentication, I want to add a new authentication source. I'm going to call this source OpenID API course. And then from the identity provider type, I'll select OpenID and click Save. Now I want to attach this source to the broker. Remember that one broker can have multiple authentication sources attached to it. And now I can configure the authentication source. Here under Identity Provider for the alias, I'm going to append underscore Boomi to this alias. It does need to be a unique alias. And then I need to provide the authentication URL and the token URL. Now, both of these are found in the text document. We've already collected them for you, and so you can copy and paste them from there. Now I need to get the client ID and client secret from my OAuth client, I'll copy. Enter the client ID and then the client secret, which will be encrypted.
Now for the default scopes, I am going to enter open ID. This section lets you specify one or more scopes to identify the APIs to which you're requesting access upon login. I'll leave the prompt type unspecified and then the redirect URL, I'm going to copy that and paste it into the client. I do want to make sure that I save the client. So now that's been updated. Now, we are not going to configure roles and groups in Google, but if you did, you would be able to work with that here on the roles tab, adding the group identifier. So I'm going to save this. We can now test the identity provider configuration. If I come to the general tab, now because we're using localhost, Keycloak is the local host. And so the test button flow needs the platform to call back to the local host. And in this case, the platform thinks it is itself. So we need to configure the client information by unchecking open ID authorization code flow. Save that. And now I can test the identity provider configuration. I do want to make sure that pop-ups are enabled in order for this to work. And I'm prompted here to sign in to my Google account. With those credentials, we can see that the identity provider successfully sent the authentication token. So this is an important step, of course, to configuring an OpenID source. You would want to leverage this test identity provider configuration. Now I'm going to check OpenID code flow and then save again. Now, in a previous activity, we set our APIs to external authentication basic, but I need to update those APIs to use this OpenID source. So I'll come to the Deployed APIs page, View APIs by Gateway, and these are the APIs that I want to change their source. So I'll click the Calculator Proxy, and then from the dropdown, select OpenID source. You'll see when I do that, I have here the authentication URL, token URL, and client ID. I'm going to need those when I make the request in Postman. But for now, I'll save and change get prospects to the open ID source. Now, I do still have my previous Postman request open. So now if I try to send again, you'll see I get 401 since the API gateway is now using a different authentication source. But since I haven't changed the authentication source on the developer portal, Mary can still log into the developer portal. Now I will need an API key, which means I'm going to need to create a new application. I'm going to do that here through the platform. I'm going to create an application for my broker. And I'm going to call this OpenID application. Fill in an owner name. and click Save. Now I'm going to subscribe both the proxy and get prospects using my one and only plan of unlimited APIs for both of them. All right, and now I have the API keys generated. Now, to verify that our external authentication source is correctly configured, we can call an API using Postman. I'm going to leverage the Get Prospects API service, but you could also use the Calculator Proxy. 
So under authorization, I'll select OAuth 2.0. And then in the headers, I'll add the X API key and enter the API key that I copied from that application. Now an access token is also required. So coming back to authorization, I'm going to click get new access token. And I'm going to give it a name, Boomi API course. The grant type will be authorization code. And you can see here there is a callback URL. Now that's going to be platform.boomi.com account and then the Atomsphere account ID. Now that's located in a couple of places throughout the platform. You will see it in any web browser, but you can also find it under the account setup. And we have instructions in the guide about how to find that. So I'm going to enter mine. I'm going to enter my callback URL, then the authorization URL, the token URL, and the client ID. These are all from here in the platform. from the authentication information. So here's my authorization URL, my token URL, and client ID. Now, Boomi does not require a client secret, so uh, you will not need that. All right, I'll request the token. I'm being prompted to log in to my Google sign-in, so I'll do that. Enter my credentials and I will allow access to the Google account, which will allow that API course Boomi to associate with my information on Google. I'll allow that. And here is the token. So it's returned with a life of five minutes. There's also a refresh token with a life of 30 minutes. So I want to use that token. And I need the URL. So here's my URL. It hasn't changed. Prospects and then the query parameter. So I send and I get the response. This video concludes now, but you can complete the exercise using the activity guide. And remember, the URLs used in this activity are included in an accompanying text file that you can download from Boomi's LMS.